Dive into God's Word. Dig a little deeper. Discover the Bible's message for you today. Pathway to Paradise Ministries presents Deeper, your daily Bible study with Dr. Tim Rumsey and Pastor David Salazar. Hello, and thank you for joining us today. You are listening to Deeper, your daily Bible study. My name is Tim Rumsey, and usually on this program, I am joined by Pastor David Salazar. I explained a few days ago that due to some technological problems, uh, we've been unable to connect over the internet like we usually do. And so uh, Pastor Salazar has obviously not been with us uh, as we've started this quarter. We're hoping to get that fixed shortly, and I look forward to being able to record together again soon. Uh, I've mentioned this as well, but just want to say it again. If you've just joined our podcast, um, I invite you to go to our website at pathwaytoparadise.org. There on our website, you can follow links on the homepage to Deeper, uh, where you have uh, access to an archive of recordings uh, for each day's study, as well as the weekly study guides and teacher helps. If you speak Spanish or somebody you know does, um, you can check out Pastor Salazar's uh, Spanish translation of the study guides, as well as his recording in Spanish of the daily lesson as well. Um, and I know that you'll be blessed by doing that. We also have a number of other study guide resources on our website that uh, we hope you would be blessed by taking a look at, so I encourage you to uh, drop by our website uh, when you're able to do that. Well, today, uh, friends, we're going to finish up our study of Daniel chapter 3. We've seen a number of parallels between Daniel 3 and the book of Revelation, and um, hopefully the importance and the relevance of this chapter uh, has uh, maybe become a little bit more clear as we've studied this week. We're going to finish today by looking at uh, one more set of parallels between uh, not just Daniel 3, but the book of Daniel, some of the stories there, and the three angels' ref, um, three angels' messages contained in the book of Revelation. Now we'll get into that uh, right after we have prayer. Let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, as we finish up this week's set of lessons, we thank you for the uh, opportunity to study together. We thank you for the technology that makes this possible. And uh, we thank you for the freedom that uh, in so many parts of the world uh, we have to open your word. Uh, Lord, there are people joining from all over the world at different times and places as we listen together. But we thank you that you're a God that is bigger than all of that. And uh, as we finish up this lesson this week, may we understand a little more clearly uh, the importance of these books of Daniel and Revelation. May we feel a little more urgency in studying the things you've revealed to us in these books. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The books of Daniel and Revelation are both extremely important for us to understand today. Their individual messages are important but an added blessing comes when we study them together. Let's consider a few statements taken from the book Testimonies to Ministers, and these statements um, all touch on the importance of studying the books of Daniel and Revelation together. The first statement is taken from, again, Testimonies to Ministers, page 116. We are standing on the threshold of great and solemn events. Many of the prophecies are about to be fulfilled in quick succession. Every element of power is about to be set to work. Past history will be repeated, old controversies will arouse to new life, and peril will beset God's people on every side. Intensity is taking hold of the human family. It is permeating everything upon the earth. And I'll just stop right there. Uh, is this not true of our world today? Now, of course, this was written uh, over a 100 years ago. If it was true then, and it was, it's much more true today. We are seeing these things happen uh, every day before our eyes. Now, here's the advice, continuing on uh, Testimonies to Ministers, page 116. Study Revelation in connection with Daniel, for history will be repeated. We, with all our religious advantages, ought to know far more today than we do know. Uh, interesting statement, study Revelation in connection with Daniel, for history will be repeated. Now, Revelation is, um, it contains some history, but it's primarily a book of prophecy. 
Uh, Daniel, of course, contains the same mix or a similar mix of stories and prophecy. Now, this week, we've been focused on one of the historical passages in Daniel. That's Daniel chapter 3, one of these stories. Um, And here the advice very clearly is to study these stories, this history contained in the book of Daniel, because this history is going to be repeated. And we've seen that earlier this week. Here's a similar statement, just a page later, same book, page 117. We read this, The books of Daniel and the Revelation should be bound together and published. It was my idea to have the two books bound together, Revelation following Daniel, as giving fuller light on the subjects dealt with in Daniel. The object is to bring these books together, showing that they both relate to the same subjects. And friends, this is a really important point. One of the big keys for understanding both books is to study them together. You know, many people have claimed over the the centuries that Revelation is just too complicated. It's too packed full of symbols and beasts and all of these other things. Uh, Who can understand it? Uh, And no doubt, honestly, there are challenges to interpreting these books. But when we read them together, it's like a key uh, sliding right into uh, a door lock. And um, they go a long ways toward interpreting each other. One last statement, and this is from the same book, Testimonies to Ministers, page 114. When the books of Daniel and Revelation are better understood, believers will have an entirely different religious experience. They will be given such glimpses of the open gates of heaven that heart and mind will be impressed with the character that all must develop in order to realize the blessedness which is to be the reward of the pure in heart. And friends, I see this as such an important um, key to understanding and studying these for benefit. You know, there's a study of the Bible that doesn't really lead to benefit. Uh, we might increase in Bible trivia, but it really doesn't change us who, uh, in who we are. It doesn't impact our character. And uh, a pastor friend of mine uh, would always say, you know, we, we don't want just information. We want transformation. And it's true. Our study of the Bible must be with the goal of allowing God to transform us and change us in who we are at our core, not just impiling on more information from the Bible. That won't save anybody. And so again, this statement, when the books of Daniel and Revelation are better understood, believers will have an entirely different religious experience. They will be given such glimpses of the open gates of heaven that heart and mind will be impressed with the character that all must develop in order to realize the blessedness which is to be the reward of the pure in heart. In the six minutes we have left today, I'm going to just touch on something that will continue developing in the weeks that follow, and that is this, that the three angels' messages are also contained in the book of Daniel. Not in one short little passage like we find in Revelation chapter 14, but rather in the stories of Daniel, chapters 3, 4, 5, and 6. The message of the three angels' messages, the character-building message, is uh, lived out for us in the lives of Daniel and his three friends and you know the other characters that pass through these stories. So in today's lesson, we will briefly examine one set of parallels between the books of Daniel and Revelation, and and that set of parallels is the three angels' messages. Uh, The three angels' messages of Revelation 14, of course, contain God's last message of warning and mercy to the world before Christ's second coming. These messages not only explain what is about to happen, such as the fall of Babylon and the mark of the beast, but even more importantly, they reveal how we should be living— so that these final events do not rip us away from our faith in God. Now, given the importance of these messages in Revelation, it should not be surprising to find them reflected in the book of Daniel. And as I just said a moment ago, they are reflected in the book of Daniel. In Daniel chapter 3, which we've been studying this week, uh, There are many, many parallels between the erection of Nebuchadnezzar's image and the enforcement of the mark of the beast in Revelation 13. Now, in this story, there are three faithful Hebrews that stand up for God and true worship. 
And even though they are threatened with death, God delivers them and glorifies his name in the process. In Revelation 13 and 14, God's saints stand up at the end of time as they face a similar situation. And prophecy reveals that they too will faithfully stand up for God and true worship by sharing and living the three angels' messages. So the first parallel that we just want to bring out here is a simple one. In Daniel 3, there are three faithful people that stand up for God. And because of the influence, not only of their words, but of their lives, uh, God is able to work and save them and other people. In Revelation, we find the three angels' messages, which are given by God's people at the end of time. And just as in Daniel 3, it's not just what they say, it's how they live that communicates the message and that allows God to work. Now, what that message is, is brought out more clearly in the three angels' messages and in the chapters of Daniel that follow. Now, what do we mean by that? Well, in Daniel chapter 4, King Nebuchadnezzar finally learns what it means to live for God's glory and not his own. And we'll study that next week. But in Daniel 4.37, he writes, Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the King of heaven, all whose works are truth and his ways judgment. And those that walk in pride, he is able to abase. In other words, Nebuchadnezzar now is a changed man. His character has been impacted by God. And that's contained in Daniel chapter 4. Now, the connection with Nebuchadnezzar's statement and Revelation 14 verse 7 should not be missed. In Revelation 14 7, the first angel says, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come. Worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. So a connection between Daniel 4 and the first angel's message. Going on, Daniel 5 records the fall of Babylon in the midst of a blasphemous and wicked party. The connections with the second angel's warning in Revelation 14 verse 8 uh, are easy to see. We read there in Revelation 14 8, And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Now, just as King Belshazzar praised the gods of gold and silver, of brass, of iron, of wood, and of stone, in Daniel chapter 5, the merchants of spiritual Babylon at the end of time mourn when no one is left to buy their merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones, and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet. The list goes on and on and on. And so Daniel chapter 5 is a parallel in the fall of Babylon with the second angel's message, which warns that spiritual or mystery Babylon at the end of time is about to fall as well. You better get out. Finally, Daniel chapter 6 relates the faithfulness of Daniel in continuing to worship God even in the face of a law with a death decree demanding worship of a human being. Similarly, Revelation's third angel warns about receiving the mark of the beast, which will involve worship laws and death decrees for those that refuse to comply. In Daniel 6, God delivers Daniel from the lion's den just as he promises to deliver his saints at the end of time. Now, as I said a moment ago, we'll continue to... uh, develop in the the next three weeks set of lessons these connections between Daniel 4 and the first angel's message, Daniel 5 and the second angel's message, and Daniel 6 and the third angel's message. But for today, let's just enjoy the fact that, or appreciate the fact, that God has revealed to us in the stories of Daniel uh, what it means to live faithfully for God, what it means to live out the three angels' messages. We can be Uh, thankful that he has shown us this, that he promises to work these miracles in our lives. We're out of time. Thank you for joining us today. I hope that you'll join us again tomorrow. Deeper is a production of Pathway to Paradise Ministries. For more Bible study resources, including books, DVDs, and study guides, visit pathwaytoparadise.org or call toll-free 855-HIS-TRUTH. To support this ministry with your tax-deductible contribution, visit pathwaytoparadise.org or call toll-free 855-HIS-TRUTH. That's 855-447-8788.